At the head of Lochranza in Arran lived a woman who acted as midwife to all of her friends and neighbours. And one day she was out in the field when she saw, and just missed with her sickle, a huge great big fat yellow frog. And she picked it up and she said, You look like you might be in need of a midwife yourself soon. If you ever need me, you just shout. And then she plopped it to the side. A few nights later, there was a hard knock at the door. And when she answered it, there was a lad standing there. My mistress is in need of a midwife, he said. You have to come right away. You'll know her, he said. You met her when she was a frog. Right, said the woman. Is she still a frog? No, she's not still a frog. You need to come right away, he said. Okay, I'll get my things. So off she went to get her things. Her husband was a wee bit unsure though, and he said, it's okay for her to go with you, but you have to make sure she's back here in three nights time. Otherwise I'm coming after you. You've got to promise now. I, I promise, said the lad. I'll bring her back three nights. Three nights time. Three nights, mind. The woman came out and she got on the back of the lad's big grey horse and they took off at such a speed, such a gallop. She'd never been on a horse as fast in all her life. And they went straight up this massive hill and at the very top was this giant crevasse. You must be mad, she said to the lad. There's no way this horse, or any horse, could jump that. And the lad went, On you go, grey kitten. Kitten, thought the woman. But then, off it went, this huge great leap. And just as it landed, the lad patted him. On your cell, grey kitten, he said. And the woman looked down. Kitten. And it wasn't a horse at all, it was this great big grey cat. What is going on here, she said. And the lad said, listen, my mistress is queen of the fairies. I'm under her spell. I'm not going to be able to escape for another year. You have to listen to me. Because what I'm going to tell you is really important. Because when I come back for you in three nights time, they're going to try and not let you leave, okay? So you have to listen. I'm listening, she said. Right, he said. When you get there, there'll be three soaps. There'll be a white one, a yellow one, and a red one. When you're alone, take a bit of the white one and rub it in your right eye. That'll let you see everything for what it really is. Do not touch the yellow or the red one at all. The other thing is, when I come for you, the fairies are going to offer you gifts. Now you can take any one of them. Take them all. But do not, under any circumstances, take silver or gold. Otherwise you're never going to be able to return. Right, she said. You have to remember, he said. I'm going to remember, she said. And they looked up, because there they were, nearly at the fairy knoll. And the door was open. She got down off the horse, cat, horse. She got down off the horse. And went inside. And inside was this huge, amazing cavern gold and jewels everywhere, rich tapestries, the like she'd never seen. It was incredible. And the people were so beautiful, so tall, so elegant. And they were dressed in the finest of silks and satins, greens and golds. She couldn't believe it. 
We took her to the Fairy Queen's bed. I knew you'd come, said the Fairy Queen. I knew when I met you in the field and you offered to help, I knew you'd come and help me. So the woman did her best and everything was okay. She made sure everything was all right. And then when the woman was alone, she took a bit of that white soap and rubbed it in her eye. And the second she did, everything changed. She wasn't in this beautiful jewel-encrusted cavern anymore. It was this pit of red gravel. And the people weren't tall and elegant and beautiful. They were old and wizened and and, and short and, and there was nothing like it, nothing like the glamour that had been put on her. But the woman was smart and she didn't let on. She just carried on like everything was fine. But she couldn't wait to get out of there. And finally, on the third night, the lad came to get her and he said it was time to fulfill his promise to her husband. And at this, all the fairies gathered round the woman and they offered her gifts. And she took everything, except for silver and gold. And then she got on the back of the lad's horse with him again. And they galloped off. But this time they didn't go by the huge crevasse or the route that they'd taken before. This time he took her this route that was surrounded in thorn bushes and briars and it was dark and, and eerie and a bit weird. Throw the gifts, he said, one by one, into the briars, into the thorns. So she did. Chucked one here, chucked one there. The next thing you know, this huge, great big boom and a fireball from where she'd thrown each of the gifts poof, went up into the air. Quickly, she started to throw the rest out. Same thing. Boom, fireball, boom, fireball. If you'd have kept them, the lad said, your house, your barn, everything would have been on fire and they'd have come to bring her. She was really grateful. And when she got back to her house, she gave him a big hug, got off the horse, went inside. And he shook her husband's hand and then bid them goodbye and he went off straight back up that big hill again. Because he had another year. And his story is, is for another time.